One of the comments you made was that dyslexia is not a disorder. And I can imagine that that would be a surprise to many people. Can you elaborate on that comment? Well, it's my opinion. So I should say that I can't say that hundreds of thousands of people would agree with me on it. But I think that what we're learning from neuroscience is that children who have dyslexia have a brain that's organized differently. They have many strengths. They have many intellectual capabilities. It's just that reading is not their strong suit. And the some of the capacities that underlie reading, like phonological awareness, are it's hard for them. Um, and I liken it to, I had a professor, a wonderful professor, her name was Doris Johnson, who said we all have learning disabilities. We all have something we can't do very well, whether it's carry a tune or draw a picture or play sports. So rather than call it a disorder or a disability, if we think about it as a, as a brain that's organized differently, it gives a more positive approach to what we want to do about it. And we, can, we stop using words like cure or fix, and we use words like um, intervene. And we can think of working with the children in ways that strengthen those underlying skills, just like if I were going to the gym, I'd want to strengthen my arms and I'd want to improve my endurance. And so if you think of brain fitness as a model for how we can help children who are struggling to learn to read, then we don't have to use words like cure, we don't have to think of it as a disease or a disorder, and children's self-concept may be more positive and so might the parents. Could we extend that to other conditions like ADHD or autism perhaps? Actually, definitely ADHD. There is a whole group of, of researchers in neuroscience who also believe that ADHD is not per se a disease for sure that it um, is a difference in the way the attentional mechanisms mature, especially the frontal lobe of the brain, it looks like at least at this point in time, and that we can, it is possible to accelerate the maturation, it is possible to train attention. So again, if we think about it as a different brain, not a brain that is impaired, Mm. we're less likely to seek out medical interventions and more likely to seek out behavioral interventions that may have more long-lasting effects and don't have the side effects, let's say, that drugs have. You gave the example of Charles Schwab, who couldn't read yeah, uh, or had a lot of difficulty with reading but obviously loved his numbers. And then you talked about uh, reading being a symbol-based communication. I would have thought that mathematics was a symbol-based communication. It but, is. But he didn't have trouble with those symbols. So can you describe what was going on there, perhaps? Well, that's a good question. Some children who have trouble reading also have trouble with other symbol systems. So, so yes, mathematics is a symbol system. Um, the number sense is a symbol system. So is reading. So is geography. So is physics and science. Those all involve symbol systems. Um, and some children just have trouble with the symbolic aspect of learning. There's also a lot about mathematics, the number sense that's shared. A lot of numbers are language. I mean, when you think about more or less, that's a word, mm. and it's a concept. When you think about higher or lower, when you th- even the numbers themselves have words associated with them. So sometimes when children have trouble with reading or language, they do have trouble with mathematics as well. They'll have trouble with word problems. But mathematics is, does involve a part of the brain, the parietal lobe, that we don't use for reading. So there are many examples of individuals who are dyslexic, who've been diagnosed with dyslexia, or certainly reading problems, that have this uncanny ability to understand numbers, numbers make sense to them, and they can rise above the reading problem or the language symbol problem and somehow move around it. Um, and that does happen. It's, it is common that you have children who are not good at reading but are um, very good at mathematics. I wouldn't say it's the rule. I would say a lot of children who have dyslexia also have trouble with mathematics, but that's not always the case. And there are other skill bases that children who have trouble reading have, like many children with dyslexia have excellent social skills. Their the left hemisphere is very involved in reading, the right hemisphere is involved in social skills, and many of those children have very strong social abilities. So there are a lot of strengths that children with dyslexia can have. Thank <laughs> you.